Electronic Minute. Today we are going back in history to learn about the inception of the 3D printer. No, not that far back. No! Ah yes, that is better. Yes, believe it or not, the beginnings of 3D printing began in 1976 with the inkjet printer. However, later on in 1984, Charles Hall embedded stereolithography, and printing was able to be done not with ink, but with various materials such as plastic and even gold and silver. In the 1990s, 3D Systems invented a machine that made three-dimensional parts layer by layer. This became the basis of future 3D printing. In 2002, a working kidney was produced by scientists. In 2011, the world's first 3D printed aircraft and car were made. And for a jaw-dropping finale, no pun intended, in 2012, just a year ago, doctors and engineers in the Netherlands were able to print a prosthetic jaw for an 83-year-old woman suffering from a bone infection. As you can see, 3D printing has become more complicated, from simple layer-by-layer -layer printing to being able to reproduce itself, to now being able to manufacture vehicles of transportation and replacing body parts. 3D printing is growing into a major industry. Good evening, America. I'm Christopher Woods, filling in for Lewis Blackman. He decided he was going to go ahead and take a vacation today. And I have to fill in. Channel 4 and 2 thirds news sincerely apologizes for interrupting your boring history documentary. However, we have breaking news to share. It appears 3D printing trend has increased tenfold, which has caused severe impacts in national employment rates. Among the latest closures, a local plant is the single largest company to have suffered this same fate. Alright, so I'm thoroughly convinced that Tom is against everything that brings peace and happiness to the world, and he's a xenophobe. Oh crap, I broke my, broke my Burberry case. Your Burberry case? Yeah, but it's fine, I can just print a new one on my 3D printer. What, are you an alchemist? No, it's this new thing. You can like print stuff with a printer at home. All you gotta do is download the file. How is a piece of paper going to replace your phone case? It's not a paper, John. It's a new thing. It prints 3D stuff. You hit print and you've got like a skyscraper in your printer. It can also be used to make like organs using stuff. So how is capitalism? Are you replacing capitalism? I'm not replacing capitalism. It's a new thing. You can pay to download the files so that your computer knows what to print. It's like downloading a picture, but paying for the picture so you can print it and frame it and put it on the wall. Except in this case, I've got a new Burberry case. All I'm hearing is a bunch of blasts I mean, I feel like handing you a lightning rod. I'm convinced that you don't like anything that helps people and makes them happy. Tom's idea of 3D printing is just a slap in the face to Henry Ford and his innovation that made this country as great as it is. And it's really causing the downfall of all Western civilization as we know it. Channel 4 and 2 thirds team field reporter Christopher Woods hits the streets to answer the tough questions that nobody was really even asking. Chris Woods here with Channel 4 and 2 thirds news, talking, asking the public about 3D printing. Let's go see what they say. Excuse me, excuse me, do you know anything about 3D printing? No, sir, I don't. Well, basically it's like a microwave, so anything you can program into it, it'll pop out with plastic. Oh, you mean food? Hot pocket? Yeah, like a hot pocket. Oh, okay. But can it make me a hot pocket? Well, a hot pocket wouldn't be necessary because it's copyright law. Uh, well, how would you feel if you had something that was produced and uploaded online and you lost tons of money? Uh, man, I want a hot pocket. Uh, well, there you have it. Nobody here knows anything about 3D printing. On October 28, 2011, Kaiba Gumfrido 
was born prematurely with lung development problems. When the Gianfrido family was at a restaurant six weeks later, Kaiba stopped breathing and started turning blue. Kaiba was diagnosed with tracheobronchomalacia, which means that his windpipe was weak. This caused Kaiba's trachea and left bronchus to collapse. Kaiba received a tracheostomy and had to use a ventilator, but this was not the right long-term solution to use. Kaiba could not breathe well, and his heart stopped almost on a daily basis. This is when doctors at the University of Michigan decided to use a 3D printing lung splint. They used computer modeling software to create the splint and match Kaiba's windpipe. The splint was printed with biodegradable polyester. Around three weeks after the operation, Kaiba no longer needed a ventilator to breathe. Recently, NASA's rocket engine injector, made from a 3D printer, passed a major hot fire test. In the test, the rocket engine injector generated 10 times more thrust than any injector made from 3D printing in the past. This fueled, no pun intended, a major investment by NASA into researching 3D printing for a variety of different possible applications. Defense Distributed is a high-tech gunsmith group that created the world's first fully open-sourced 3D printed gun called the Liberator. 15 of the gun's 16 parts were made out of 3D printed plastic, and the body weight can be etched overnight. Cody Wilson of Defense Distributed believes that the Liberator demonstrates the government's inability to enforce gun control. Let's go live once again to our Channel 4 and 2 thirds news team field reporter. Christopher Wiz here with Channel 4 and 2 thirds news. I'm here at the local police department to go ahead and find out what they think about 3D printed guns. Sir, do you, do you feel any uh, immediate issues with 3D printed guns? My issues with the 3D printed guns are that they're undetectable. Um, you can't detect them in a conventional way. Um, anytime anybody has a gun on them, it has to be taken seriously. They have the 3D printed gun on them. We have to treat it as if it is a regular firearm. 